to Showtime's Fight Form. You already know what it is. This is your boy Showtime, and thank you for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. And you already know, man. This is where we talk all things fights. Now, I, I, I took a week off. Um, not necessarily on vacation, but I, I broke a couple things, and I need to reorder it. So, voila, I'm back. <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot that has happened in this week that I've been gone. And I've been, I'm just... What the hell? So first, I want to talk about the fight, uh, which was the Brian Ortega versus Yair Rodriguez. Super sad about how that fight went down. At the end of the day, Yair looked good, but that's kind of what I said was going to happen. I said that in order for Brian Ortega to win this fight, he was going to have to go through some ish in order to win. And he was going through some ish, and it started to go his way when he got the takedown, but then he got hurt. It's kind of weird with the technicalities when it comes to how he got hurt was, you know, it was because of the submission. So he retreated and then kind of popped the shoulder out. But at the end of the day, that's not a way you want to win a fight. So it's still unfortunate no matter how you want to look at it. Uh, and, you know, like I said, Yair looked good, man. But we already knew on the stand-up department, man, he can hang with the best of them, man. He's very tough and he's the most creative striker in the freaking UFC. So sorry about the side note, um, the noise. Let's go ahead and cancel that so that don't happen again but yeah um a lot of crazy stuff happens when it comes to him in the striking game now what's next for both they're not going to do a rematch i would have been okay with the rematch but at the end of the day we don't know how bad brian or take shoulder is so if you need surgery you obviously have to move on and keep pushing and i think the next one would be an interim belt which would be yair versus josh emmett and i'm 100 down for it it's perfect um now we already know alex alex Volkanowski is hurt and even if he wasn't hurt, it's at the same time, I know he's looking for the 155 pound fight that we're gonna talk about a little bit and see who wins that and see if he wants to you know, challenge for that as well. So it's a perfect opportunity for those guys. And I'm, it's a great fight, amazing fight. That's a fight that we all wanna see. No person I wanna talk about is Amanda Lima's. Girl look good. She looked really good. All right, that was a really good fight for her. Some people thought she lost the first. I actually thought she won the first. I didn't really think, like I told you, like it wasn't gonna be that action or in the like until something does happen because that's the way Karate Hottie fights. But she sunk that choke in and whoop. <laughs> Next thing you know, she's the winner. And we will talk about her a little bit later too because she got a fight, another fight book now. So the fight card all together was actually really, really good. A lot of fun fights, but I don't really want to talk too much about that. I really want to talk about these news breaks that we've been hearing. What? Dana been working. <laughs> Dana has been working. John Shelby, all them got they've been working because this, like, like we have got nothing but UFC 280 news, and I am just so ecstatic for this card. It's my, on my birthday month. I cannot wait. A couple weeks before I get married, I'm gonna be locked and loaded. I cannot wait. And I'm just literally praying up to the heaven lords that nothing happens to this card because I mean it's not that far away. It's only what two months away for real, two and a half months. It's not that far away. So guys, stay safe. Just get healthy. I mean, just to make sure you're in shape and I want to see these fights. But let's first start off with the main event that they announced, which was Charles Oliveira, who we know is the real champ, but whatever, fighting Islam Makachev. I mean, it's a grappler's paradise. We have somebody who's, we already know, the greatest submission artist in UFC, UFC history. You don't have to argue with me, argue with the stats. That's what the stats tell me. Uh, then the, and the most dangerous ground game we've ever seen. And going against Islam Makachev, who is, uh, people try to paint as a Habib, but he's not really Habib. He's not as good as Habib, in my opinion, but he's still very good. Not fight win streak. He's only been finished once. And it's a it's a parallel styles, and it's going to be fun. We have the wrestler versus the jiu-jitsu artist, but, you know, we, we, all, we all know how this fight's going to try to play out. Islam isn't going to stand with him too much. Islam, if he tries to stand with Charles, Charles will piece him up. We got to also put in perspective, too. This will be the first fight and I don't even know how long where he's fighting somebody who really doesn't or isn't known for knocking people out or isn't known for their punching power. So, I mean, this is going to be like, I mean, because even Kevin Lee, he'll knock you out. I mean, Tony Ferguson, he can knock you out. Like, this is the first person where it's stand up where it's like, eh, he's not really going to knock you out. He can. No, he's not really going to, though. So this is the first time we're going to see this in a while. But then he's going against a guy whose top game might be the best that anybody's ever fought. So, Interesting. Then they announced that they're also going to do another championship fight, which is going to be Aljamain Sterling versus TJ Dillashaw. 
which is once again, another grapplers paradise. The two great grapplers. TJ Dillashaw, we already know, it's gonna be good luck in paradise trying to out grapple this guy, but then you also have Aljamain Sterling, who's gonna try no matter what. Like stand up wise, TJ Dillashaw is gonna wax him. However, can Aljamain take him down? And if he does, can he keep him down? We saw Dominic Cruz take down TJ Dillashaw a couple times. Couldn't keep him down though. So once again, interesting fight, but that's two fights already. So I'm mean, two championship fights. You were like, oh, we can't get no better. <laughs> that's not true. We already know they already booked Mo fights. Now they have Bilal Muhammad versus Sean Brady, which is another grapplers matchup. However, these guys are pretty well rounded. These both guys both can strike, but they're also really good solid grapplers. Um, if we're going grappling, I probably will lean a little bit towards Sean Brady, but at the end of the day, who knows? Bilal can now grapple a lot of people and he's a strong man. Stand up, I don't know. Will Bilal try to stand up? I, it's an interesting fight. We have no idea, but I cannot wait to see it. Bilal isn't really the most exciting fighter. However, like I feel like when you put him against a guy that can wrestle, it makes for an exciting fight because he's not the greatest defensive striker. So he does get punched. So I think if you take away that game, it makes an exciting fight because he's still tough. You can punch him in the face, but he can eat it. So yeah, like I said, very, very fun fight. Then I think they also announced Marina Rodriguez versus Amanda Lemos, which is once again, like what? She just fought, but she's fighting again. Respect it. But this fight is going to be bonkers. Bonkers. Both ladies can punch. Both ladies are long, strong ladies. I don't really see, I mean, if I would go ground game, I'd probably lean towards Amanda, but at the end of the day, I don't think this fight is going to even play out. And once I, once we get closer to that main event or that, that card, I'll actually break down these fights. But just from the outside looking in, just because once again, these news just brought them, just, just came down, couldn't break down no film, couldn't watch anything. It's just me off the top of my head. And it's just going to be a really good fight. I mean, it's going to be a stand up fight where these ladies are going to go after it. I know people wanted to see Marina fight Rose. But I mean, who knows? Maybe Rose didn't want the fight. Maybe Rose is hurt. Maybe she just want to take a time off. Who knows? But this is the next best fight in my opinion. And I'm, I'm, I'm hype. I ain't hype. I love that division. That division is just so fun. There's so many fun fights we can make in that division. Um, what's where? Where are we at now? Next with this, Benil Duryush versus Gamera. Didn't expect to see that coming. And it's like all these fights are happening in the same freaking card. But once again, great fight. And this is uh, what I'm noticing is they they're actually pairing guy's strengths against other guy's strength. Gamrot's a really good wrestler. We already saw he is a he's relentless with takedowns and he's gonna eventually get them. Like five rounds, we saw what he did and he consistently was going for the shot. And the man had cardio for days. But he's also going against Benil Darius, who's also a phenomenal grappler. If I was, I, it, it's kind of like the old lion versus the young because Gamrot's young coming up. Benil Darius is old. I'm pretty sure he's close to 40 now. Yeah, he has gray hair now. So, there's just so many like ways, like also the grappling is completely different. And I, I mean, I would probably favor the youthful guy when it comes to this, but who knows, man, Baron, B Benil's been in the game for so long, he can have so many tricks up his sleeve as far as the grappling department. And stand up, I might honestly favor Benil. Benil's stood with the best of them and honestly has like held his own. I'll never forget, even with the fight versus, um, um, why am I forgetting it, Barboza, before he got slept, like he was winning pretty easily. So, it's a lot happening. I'm, I'm really excited for that. Uh, but the fight that I really want to talk about, the fight that, like, it's not the main event. It's 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 good enough to be a fight night main event. And I'm just so confused on how it got booked, why it got booked, but I'm so down for it. And that is Sean O'Malley versus Peter Yan. What in the hell? What, what, why, how? That's what I want to know. That's like the first, when I first saw that, I thought, so, I thought it was fake. I thought people just made it up. And then I, I really saw it was real because I think Brent Ultimo, uh, I'm sorry, butchered his last name. But Brett from um, ESPN, he posted it. I'm like, oh shoot, this is for real. No, they're fighting. <laughs> what a step up in competition. You fight Pedro, who is still a good fighter, top 10 fighter. But yet still, that fight didn't end the way nobody wanted it to end. And then you upgrade completely to possibly the best 135er in the entire world. Like, there's plenty of people who still think he's the best, even if he did lose to Algermain. Okay. They really are selling with this hype train now. I feel like they're trying to really cash in because this is not a good fight for Sean at all. Like, at all. With that fight, even if it didn't, you know, it ended early, we didn't really get to see the full grasp of it. 
I just didn't see enough to make me think he's even in the same stratosphere as Peter. There are advantages that Sean will have, size, height, reach, athleticism, I don't, I don't really think so, but size, yeah. But I mean, Jan can out grapple him. He can out strike him. He's definitely tougher than Sean. I, it's a de it's, it's, I mean, go, prove yourself. I'm proud of it. I'm happy about it. Like, just do you, bro. Like, I'm, I'm excited for this and shock the world because I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody but your team gonna think you gonna win. I'm, I actually like Sean, but ain't no way in hell I'm putting my money on Sean. And I, even in the breakdown, I, there's nothing I can see. There's nothing I saw from Sean in these previous fights to make me think he can compete with Peter. I don't, good luck. I mean, the only thing is that he's a slow starter. My thing is if Sean's gonna win, he needs to win in the first round. If he doesn't win in the first round, this fight's a wrap, he's getting waxed. It's gonna be bad. He only has, he has five minutes to win that fight because Peter is a slow starter. But even still, he picks up very quickly. And if it's a three, it's probably gonna be a three round fight, which it should be. Yeah. He, that means he's that 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 five's probably gonna cut to two and a half because he knows he can't just give away a round because he has that four to work with. But like I said, it's our it's card of the year, card of the year, card of the freaking year. And like I said, I just love the matchmaking with this because they're putting guys strength versus strength, yeah, striker versus striker, wrestler versus wrestler, grappler versus grappler. Like I I just love it. Um, like so please tell me what you guys think. And I mean they're not even finished building this card yet. It's in October. There's still some some more fights they're gonna put on there. I want to hear what you guys are. What fight are you most looking forward to? And I um, mean, what's your early fight predictions? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we know it's going to change when it get close to the fight, but I want to know what you guys think and where your head's at. Uh, but as always, man, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. And be blessed.